strategy. So what I'd like to do, and it's on page two, please, is uh, share with you just a little bit about the TD Bank Group and how we built our foundation, starting with Lean Six Sigma into process excellence, and how that is really leading us to our current uh, state of driving end-to-end -end process thinking and management across TD Bank. I'll leave about 10 to 15 minutes at the end for any questions that you may have, so I really do encourage you to type them in, and I'm sure Smart Solutions team um, will be very happy to go ahead and facilitate that portion of the presentation. Before I get started again, I'd just like to thank Forrest and his team for inviting me to speak at this webinar, and I hope that it's going to be a worthwhile hour for everyone who's uh, joining us today. So uh, about TD Bank Group, now TD is, uh, the headquarters are in Toronto, and I'm speaking to you today from Toronto, Canada, and it's one of those newer companies. It's been around about 160 years, so it's, it's um, been very successful. Uh, it, it actually made it through, we would say, the financial crisis of 2008 quite well, um, with one of the best rated banks throughout all of it. Um, and I would say that today, um, just to share, there are more TD uh, branches in the U.S. than there are in Canada today, and that was uh, as recently as 10 years ago, we had no branches in the U.S. So today, uh, TD is the fifth largest bank in North America with 22 million customers worldwide. Our adjusted earnings last year were a little bit over $8 billion, and 80% of our earnings do come from retail. Now, the interesting thing about this slide is you see a picture of something called the J.D. Power Award, and um, in, in banking, in, in retail Canadian banking, about nine, ten years ago um, was the first time they actually put uh, up the J.D. Powers Award, and the TD Bank has won the award nine consecutive times. So uh, a very, very deep embedded culture and passion for customer experience. So, um, and again, with a long history of, of success. So on page four, what I would like to share with you now is um, our vision. And I think it's important to start here because you can see it in orange there as the TE vision is to be the better bank. And that's important for us continuous improvement practitioners because it doesn't say best, it, it says better. And that means that we are always striving to be the better bank, which means it's a huge focus on continuous improvement. In fact, you can see it there is the very first pillar that while what we are really trying to accomplish is not just do continuous improvement, but to live it each and every day and always get better on behalf of our customers. In addition to that, there's um, inherently been a stronger and stronger focus on the importance of process. Um, when I got here back in 2008, uh, there were a few leaders in the company that were saying, we've really got to start looking at how we are delivering our products and services to our customers and really focus on how we're going to improve that process. And this has continued to grow in the last uh, six or seven years. In addition to that, the words transparent value mean that we measure everything. Uh, we want to make sure that we really understand what's important to our bank and to our customers, measure how we're doing so that we can truly deliver transparent value. And again, for those of us that are Lean Six Sigma practitioners, that's very important because metrics and how we measure things and how we feed the data are work that we traditionally are a very big part of, of helping to give organizations that picture. And finally, um, at the end there, it says enable end-to-end -end service excellence. This was something that was recently added this was not one of the strategic pillars um, as recently as three years ago. We added this actually two years ago um, because now um, what we're realizing is that it's not just enough to improve by yourself or um, and go to a historic means for your customers in order to improve their experience, but that we actually have to start looking across the value chain in order to improve things for our customers, hence end-to-end -end service excellence. So this is one of the things that now we're adding to really focus in to be the better bank. Okay, so a little bit about my team. My team is called the Service Quality Team. And who we are is we are a center of excellence in process for the bank. We are a group of full-time continuous improvement professionals. We are all either master black belts, 
black belts or green belts where we are training to become one of those belts who spent 100% of their time embedded into those various lines of business across the bank driving process improvement. So what we do with those organizations is that we work with them on their team to help them to identify and to prioritize and to execute on their Lean Six Sigma continuous improvement plans and projects. Um, my team also is very involved in trying to drive and change the culture so that we have an end-to-end -end thinking mindset. And so as such, there's been a lot of work done in the training aspect of not just the service quality team, but of all TD employees. And so we have owned and customized and created um, all of the Six Sigma training uh, that is going out in the company today. My team also is responsible for mentoring uh, the belt, and in addition to that, we have set up an internal black belt, uh, green belt, and master black belt certification board that does internal certifications. One thing I might add here is I said all training has been customized uh, internally and delivered um, for TD. But we've also partnered very closely with Smarter Solutions um, from the beginning. I recognize that in order to have a, a good team of process experts, we needed to have some of the best training and expertise that was available. So I had worked uh, with Forrest in my previous company and really felt that his approach to incorporating uh, Lean and Six Sigma along with the alignment to the strategy of the company was uh, just critical components of what I was trying to accomplish. And also, um, I wanted a very good, highly um, regarded technical program as well. So um, I've been working with uh, Forrest and the Smarter Solutions uh, company to provide all of my black belt and master black belt and green belt training for us and also um, really helps as well to guide our master black belts with some extraordinary master black belt mentoring as well. So big shout out to Forrest and his team. Um, in addition to the training, really what we're trying to get at is to drive the culture of continuous improvement, as I mentioned, and then ultimately to advance our thinking so that it's not just a one-off project base, but actually to start thinking end-to-end -end across all of our lines of business. So from a development of our process leaders, and, and let me start first with my Service Quality Center of Excellence books. We actually spend a lot of time on developing them. But first, acquiring um, our black belt or process expertise talent. So about 80% of my team are acquired internally. We, we look <laughs> across the company uh, to the bankers um, that we work with, and many of them have been very involved in the projects, uh, the Six Sigma projects that we have been delivering. And they have a natural affinity to understanding process. Uh, they like dealing with complex issues. They like dealing with problems that don't quite have solutions yet. And um, they're very good at being able to communicate and facilitate. Those are kind of the criteria that we look for. And um, so 80% of my staff has been uh, built um, from folks who have literally no uh, exposure rather than being on these projects as business owners. And we bring them in and we do something that we call an associate program. Um, we spend almost a year uh, putting these uh, folks that we acquire from within into a very rigorous black belt or green belt training program. And through that, uh, we provide not only the technical skill set, um, but we also develop them from a soft skills perspective as well. And um, we feel that's important because uh, they bring with with it, with themselves, the business acumen. They know TD, um, but they need to be able to apply the Lean Six Sigma principles and communicate it in such a way that is effective and meets the needs of the businesses that they're supporting. So in addition to our technical curriculum, we also spend a lot of time on what we would call the soft skills, which are things such as uh, impact and influence skills, practicing on executive communications, because what we find with our green belts and our black belts is many times um, they are assisting the business or leading in what we call the project report out to all levels of the organization. This is one of the few times where you might have a junior manager actually reporting up uh, their findings up to the most senior vice president in the bank 
And so we want to ensure that they are very effective uh, in their communication skills, along with being able to communicate uh, the benefits of the project, so the financial benefits, the risk avoidance. So we spend a lot of time training in that. Um, thought leadership, I already mentioned facilitation. So these are um, the areas that we have separate curriculum and ongoing mentoring uh, as well as the technical aspect. And the little honeycomb um, slide that you, or, or box that you see up there, these are activities that we do on a regular basis to provide ongoing support to our team in addition to the in-classroom training. We feel it's important to do things like um, share best practices, for example. So um, about once a month, we'll have one of our belts get up and talk about a project that they have uh, just recently delivered that has done something quite extraordinary to share with the rest of the team. Uh, we do tech talks, which are maybe we'll take a particular tool that we want to emphasize that month. And again, one of our staff members will give a tech talk um, to our, our team, and we actually open some of this out to the larger um, uh, TD environment as well. Uh, several times a year, we have personal development days where we go off-site all together as a team and actually work on um, maybe some interesting external speakers, some particular skill sets that together as teams that uh, we want to do. And then in addition to that, once a year, um, there's something in there, you can see it, uh, called Ignite. We hold a big uh, company-wide forum, and it's really a best practices sharing forum, where the 10 top process improvement teams from across the bank come together, and they actually compete. And we have our senior executives, including our president, our senior vice presidents come in and quote, score and judge uh, those teams, and we recognize the best of the best. And we have a lot of fun, and it's a big celebration. And it is one of the most effective ways that we have found to actually share information and do it in such a way that if you don't know anything at all about Six Sigma, about the service quality team, about process improvement, once you come and you see uh, these uh, projects uh, being shared with the team members and the incredible results that they're getting, it's the best way I've found to date to, quote, sell the overall program. So what's some of the impact that we've been having? So since we've started now, we're in the thousands of discrete, what we call BAU, or Business as Usual Lean Six Sigma projects. Um, when we started our very first year, after the first year, and this is an annualized, we had about, I would say, a little bit less than $15 million worth of results, which was pretty significant. But when you're as large as we are, um, our bank, you know, it's like you've got to start accumulating the benefits. So um, what I would share with you is that uh, since our, our beginning, um, we've more than doubled our, um, our financial impact year over year, and we're, we're actually closing in on over a, a billion dollars uh, by the end of this year is what we're hoping to do. So once you get to levels like that, it does have an impact. And, and then you are able to make decisions about where am I going to reinvest this money and what, what am I going to be doing to actually advance whatever the strategic pillars are of, of uh, of the bank. So it's become quite a, um, a large part um, of our company and it's really helping us to, to continue to get those J.D. Powers Awards uh, year over year. So the size of, of my team is 100. So we now have about, we started with six and we have 100 dedicated uh, service quality team members. But what I would share with you is that in addition to these dedicated process experts, we, we probably have thousands of people uh, across the bank who have also been trained uh, up to the yellow belt level. They're participating on the projects. We have a lot of online training that we've made available. I think uh, we've been keeping track. We've got about 7,500 people who, are, who to date have taken the online training. So um, we are the leaders in leading the most complex projects, but we have also have a philosophy of pushing out as much as we can uh, this type of methodology so that we can do at the business level more the grassroots as well. So um, quite, quite a large success to date. And in addition to that, we're actively focusing in on building design principles, design for Six Sigma, into our process expertise. And then I'm going to talk a little bit more in the presentation about what we're doing now to move from the discrete projects into end-to-end -end process management. 
So how did we evolve? Um, so we started with a, a very distinct focus. I think a lot of companies do, and uh, specifically when you're in transactional type services, non-manufacturing, um, you focus initially on lean. It's easy to take a look at something, what's value add, non-value add, what can we remove? Um, and that's the initial focus for process improvement. But then, um, you know, when you're looking at the problems that the company is trying to solve for, you start saying, you know, there are a lot of things that having a process focus can really help you to improve. So very quickly, um, in addition to the lean, we started incorporating a lot of our expertise into things like moving uh, processes. So um, you could move processes because maybe you're reorganizing and you're bringing two discrete businesses together. Um, maybe what you're doing is you're acquiring a business and you have to move processes from one business to another. Maybe there's um, an opportunity to do some labor arbitrage and maybe you know we want to move some of our processes from Canada to the U.S. or U.S. back to Canada. All of those kinds of things are moving of processes. And um, you know we do we do a big focus as well. Um, harder to do takes more time, but also to embed the designing of processes as well into this. So we started DFSS again back in I would say 2009 2010, and we've been keeping that up and slowly growing that and in increasingly trying to embed that into our end to end process management. But anyway, so we, we, we're not just doing lean, we're doing anything that touches a process that requires uh, improvement and a focus on process is what my team is responsible for. And so um, you don't just jump from doing nothing with process to end-to-end -end process management. I, I think if I look, I've attended quite a number of conferences and, and spoken at some of them, um, it is unrealistic to expect, uh, you know, just to go from zero to 90 in, in um, two seconds. Um, you actually have to build a foundation of even understanding why is process important, uh, get some traction with actually getting some results so that you have your proof points, and then start um, really expanding the culture for continuous improvement through the training and getting more and more of those discrete projects and then beginning to look for opportunities to start linking those discrete projects together, and then to maybe rename uh, what you are to process excellence, because that is what you're doing for, for, um, for the company, and then ultimately um, really start focusing um, on end-to-end -end process management, which is linking it together. So that's really the, the steps that we have gone through um, to get to where we are today with our focus on end-to-end -end process management. And um, that little picture, and I'll talk more about that uh, under end-to-end -end process management, is that we actually now have created a playbook or a methodology, and that was created by our team here. Uh, we started in 2013, we've evolved it last year, and so there is now an end-to-end process management methodology that is uh, the foundation of it is Lean Six Sigma. So that is what the bank is following today. But we have developed all of that in-house. And really what we're trying to do is focus in on getting everyone to think about um, where, they, where they are in the value chain and what the inputs are that are coming into them and the outputs of what they're giving and really start optimizing across the value chain. So that's, that's really what our focus is right now. I'm not saying we're all done with that, good to go, but that's, uh, that's where we are at this point. I, I think I introduced that last year, um, so I'll share with you um, a little bit more about um, how far we've come and what we're doing. So the reason behind, um, it's not just a nice to do, this is a very, very challenging, as, as any of you who are practitioners know, um, this is not an easy task. It, it's dealing with um, the strategies of the company. Um, but in our case in particular, um, I think it helped that uh, we have such a focus on our customers, on the customer experience, and really doing everything we can to make it a better customer experience. Now, what we were finding, um, and, and our leader in particular, our president, would say that a lot of, and he recognized this, this customer experience was based on the heroics of our individual employees. And the reason that it's based on that is because if something went wrong, there was not a good repeatable process by which they could solve the problem, but they had to go 
do extraordinary efforts sometimes to solve the problem. So um, he looked at it and said, you know, what can we do? This is now what we have to tackle. Uh, we really have to start looking at things from across the entire process with the customer lens in mind and start fixing those what, what we would call you know, fix the things in the white spaces, the, the handoffs between lines of business. Um, from a business perspective, what's the business case to doing this? Uh, yes, you know, um, you could say TD is, is a very successful company, it is. And I would just say for myself personally, you know, I happened to, uh, with the last two companies I was with, both times when they launched Continuous Improvement and Lean Six Sigma, it was because they were actually in a bit of a crisis. So they had to fix things, there was a business imperative. I would submit that it is probably more challenging when you are very successful to actually go through this kind of rigor to say, all right, you know, we, it is an imperative for us, we've got to get better. So I would just share with you, it's a bit more challenging. However, having said that, no one in today's economy, especially in the financial sector, is immune from the myriad of increasingly complex regulatory environment of what's being imposed upon uh, financial institutions. And so that is the antithesis to leaning something out and things that make sense in a process. These are, you could view it as non-value added but necessary, but truly you have to get better at what you're doing in order to respond uh, to the crushing weight of that, and it's not going away, so you have to do something dramatically different there. Um, what we have seen is that our customer demands are coming in faster. They want things new, uh, quicker. If there is a problem, uh, they want it resolved quicker. Um, and then we have the um, increased focus on looking external. It's something that we call anti-money laundering, which is the whole you know, threat to financial institutions of terrorism. All that is not going to be getting any less. So we have to have very robust uh, systems in place to be able to respond to that and you know our competition as always is looking at these things too so it's not like we feel gee we can just be com uh, complacent these are very very uh, compelling reasons for us to do things dramatically different and in our case uh, one of the key answers is to really focus in on more robust processes so that we can respond to these demands through end to end So again, I mentioned a lot of these um, already, but what we are experiencing or what we had been, and this should look probably pretty familiar to those of you who are uh, process practitioners, but in our bank, again, we would say, gosh, maybe initially a lot of the problems were caused because whatever we have up front maybe wasn't designed that well and it was thrown into our branches and into our operating offices to just start you know, working it. And, we had to do a lot of rework. It's not past tense. We are doing a lot of rework, a lot of unnecessary handoffs, slowing down the entire process, errors that our customers are feeling. And as a result of trying to correct all those problems, losing a lot of, of um, you know, lost uh, potential revenue for, for the bank. So again, these are all uh, very, very compelling reasons. And part of my initial work here that I had to do was actually to, to isolate and to show what was causing all of these things and then through the process improvement work to fix it. And that's historically what we've done with those thousands and thousands of projects. So they could actually then start to see, gee, this stuff works and now we want to expand it to actually now start focusing in on those things, those white spaces in between the lines of business that nobody owns today. And oh, on top of it, uh, the technology that all these processes run on is very kludgy, it's old, it's been customized over, over the years, and it's not a plug and play. And so there's a tremendous amount of effort underway as well to actually improve the technology as well. That was an easy problem. There's <laughs> no problem at all there. So um, what our, our stated goal is here for adopting an end-to-end -end approach is, again, step one for us is to really identify from the customer perspective what are some of those key end-to-end -end processes that our customers, uh, the journeys, if you will, that they go through. And in banking, it might be a customer will go through a process of buying a home. So that's one of the first ones, by the way, that we did look at uh, when we were doing end-to-end -end process work. 
And then um, the next thing that we did is we said, okay, up until now we don't really have a clear owner for a process. And so um, our president again said the, the individuals that own the P&L um, for the process, even if it goes across multiple lines of business, will be the de facto owner. We didn't know what exactly that meant at the time and there's still a lot of work around that, but we did at least come up with a owner. And then um, what we also did is we said we're going to have the output of this work help us to inform the technology roadmap that is going to be linking to a simplified and scalable uh, architecture and technology solution. So our goal um, in end-to-end -end thinking was really to, across the company now, have a common understanding, a common methodology to understanding no matter what line of business you're in is where do you fit in in the value chain. That's a common understanding. Develop a partnership because although we have a designated owner, who owns what? And, and how do you actually get people to work together and not at odds um, across the value chain? So our methodology that, um, that we've developed actually goes um, to starting to solve for that partnership and that through definition of what's happening, agreed upon metrics, and protocols of what's going to be happening all the way along the value chain. So that's really the beginning of that partnership and having regular governance meetings as well that really didn't exist before. Again, setting times, uh, faster times to react. Um, a lot of our customer SLAs were 10, 15 years old, so we're really trying to reset that clock to better serve our customers. And then again, um, when we're looking at optimization or improvement opportunities, um, very different when you start looking end to end versus within a line of business. So our entire portfolio of our process improvement projects now are tending to not be just within a line of business, but these projects that are coming out of this to optimize are actually now little mini end-to-end -end projects, if you will. So it's been very interesting, and that then helps common understanding and developing partnership as well. And then um, one of the things that we're just starting to do uh, this last year, again, our president said, I want this to happen, and we're doing this now, is to take the output from our end-to-end -end process reviews and actually now those gaps, if you will. And then when they're requesting something new to happen in technology is to now start creating, and we've actually just created this process, is how, to, how it's linking into the technology roadmap and also the request for what we call the major funding for the technology enhancement. So it's a pretty massive undertaking, but that's uh, what the work that's underway this year. And then again, um, we're really re-sculpting our design for Six Sigma to get it embedded into the end-to-end -end thinking and process management so that we're, we're really, again, we're thinking about renaming it uh, to process design versus uh, design for Six Sigma. And um, there's a whole change management process uh, that we've put in place as well um, because a lot of the changes that come out of this are cross or pan organizations. So uh, we've had to work with our change management organizations. Um, on the next page, uh, this is a little snapshot of, of some of the things that we do uh, for our methodology working with the business is to again uh, up front, do the initiation and planning around what we're going to do from an end-to-end -end perspective, get the team together to actually create the as-is uh, picture, if you will, and then uh, deep dive into the um, get agreement on what are those key opportunities, and then across the value chain, what are we collectively going to work on, and then how are we going to govern this process looking at the key metrics going forward. So that again, that, that's what that, uh, that description is. Uh, there is uh, quite a lot of, um, there, this is literally like a book, <laughs> when I say a playbook, there is a book behind it, that's the high level summary. But this is what we're now training the lines of business on, uh, our value stream partners on, because they are all part of these end-to-end -end projects now. Um, so it's, it's a pretty massive undertaking. And then, um, what comes out of this, we, we actually bucket uh, the outputs of the end-to-end -end process reviews into several different categories. Again, just like with any project, uh, improvement project that you may do, there are some things quickly that you can do with very limited technology. They're just inherently obvious and you can get agreement to do them. We call those our quick wins. 
it takes less than three months uh, to to implement. Sometimes you find uh, that you actually have to go away and get one of those, you know, to make projects set up. And as I mentioned earlier, increasingly these are now we've got members of value. Uh, chain involved in these Demaic projects versus a singular line of business. The interesting thing that we have found um, now increasingly that the end-to-end -end process reviews that we're doing are is driving the portfolio of all of our Six Sigma projects now going forward. So I'm sure we're going to see more and more and more of that as well. And then, um, as I mentioned, we are also taking the, okay, what does involve a technology enhancement? And we are now linked up to our technology organizations and um, really helping to put what's going to happen this year, next year, and the year after, and starting to build out their technology roadmap. So, you know, what's next for us? Again, um, we're going to continue to uh, prioritize and look at uh, the high impact end-to-end -end, uh, processes that we're going to be doing our, our reviews on and uh, again working with all the uh, folks in the value chain. Um, we look at that always continue with what's the, the highest priority to from an improvement perspective from our customer and sometimes uh, those end-to-end -end processes are from the risk lens as well. And what we have, again, because we can't help ourselves, um, we have to um, get better at even doing these end-to-end -end reviews, and our president as well has asked us, can you, can you go faster? Can you do more? Because it's so important to us. It's strategically critical to uh, what we need to accomplish in the company. So we've, we've made quite a lot of improvements to our overall approach, and, and we've been able to go a lot faster. Um, from our very first year to second year, we've actually improved our cycle time by over 50% and um, gotten a lot better with the outputs as well. And I think we'll continue um, to get better at it because, again, as more and more people are involved in doing this work, you don't have to stop and explain why and how. They already have been through it and so you can go faster. And that's what we're starting to see as well. Um, a big area for us that, that really does require um, focus is uh, the governance and interaction models. Um, that continues to be for us something that I think will we'll mature into and get better at what we're doing. We're, we're actually, again, um, we've got some that are pretty good that we're starting, so um, we want to get more and more of that and eventually even um, look at it up a level. How do we govern some of the stuff, not just at the, at the end-to-end -end process level, but you know, maybe at a higher organizational level as well. So we've already started to see some pretty large transformational changes from this work, as I mentioned, as, as we found that, gee, maybe it makes sense to move you know, certain pockets or certain work uh, into other organizations, you know, combine them together. Um, that's happened already on numerous occasions. Um, but I think what's been most interesting to me is, is how we're now really being um, asked to help to um, feed into investment decisions, and uh, that's from a technology perspective, but it's also technology as it's linked to um, some of our future customer needs as well for things that we're not doing today. So I think that's actually, for me, over the next couple of years, it's going to be very interesting to see um, the output of that. So I promised you that I would leave uh, about 15 minutes. Uh, for questions, and uh, we're our, we are actually about at the 15-minute uh, time mark. And so with that, uh, I guess I will turn it over um, uh, and open it up for questions. Perfect, Leslie. Thank you so much. We do have a lot of questions coming in, and if you do have additional questions, feel free to enter them into your chat function there on your screen. Uh, Leslie, just to kind of sum up a little bit of what you said, um, with your service quality department, you guys are building a foundation on Lean Six Sigma. You're getting the results and, and generating traction on that, then working to expand the culture, looking for opportunities to link the projects, and then with those projects, focusing on an end-to-end -end, uh, customer-centric uh, community in, in TD. Is that kind of how you would sum up what you guys are doing as a service quality department? Yeah, see, we didn't even need the 40 minutes. See, you just did it in two <laughs> minutes. Perfect, perfect. 
No, and you gave us so much detail and so much to uh, benefit our, our businesses. Uh, so one of these questions that we come to is, how do you determine the financial benefit? So that was one of the first things um, that, that we did back in um, 2009. What we did is, uh, as the team, the service quality team sat down and, and we said, we've really got to come up with a standard way to measure benefits that are coming out of, of these process improvements. So we came up with a standard methodology. Uh, we have a couple different kinds of benefits. We have what we call hard benefits, which would be where you're taking direct cost out of uh, the organization as a result of your process improvement work. Um, and again, we, we worked with finance to say these are those categories that directly impact the P&L, because they already have those, right? So if this project helps to do that, those are hard benefits. The second category would be things that you recognize that are um, what we call cost avoidance. And again, we have a, quite a large um, definition of things that could be cost avoidance, but I, I would say um, things like, well, you know, um, we improved the process, so so maybe next year we don't have, maybe we had people we had to put under contract to do some of the, the extra work. Well, we don't have, we know we're not going to have to hire them next year, so that would be an avoidance of that cost. Could be on a risk uh, program, uh, gee, you know, we were, could have been fined for something, we improved the process, so, you know, that could be an avoidance there as well. And um, some of the other benefits would be just, uh, these aren't financial as much, but these, again, would be more in the risk category or compliance uh, category where, you know, you have to do something to, um, because in our case, the, you know, the financial auditors or whatever saying, you know, you really need to do X, Y, and Z to comply, and so we have to change the process in order to meet the, regulator, the regulators. So those are our three buckets um, that our projects tend to fall into. And then what we do is we got agreement with finance. We take a 12-month snapshot of those benefits, a run rate, and then we book the benefits in the year that the project um, actually is completed. And then what we've been doing as well is um, we've also just been tracking on a cumulative basis what is the, what is the cumulative um, benefits that we've uh, accomplished over the past uh, five years. Excellent. Uh, Leslie, we've got a lot of questions about support and how you mentioned that you have monthly meetings and these reviews. What support do you guys have and how do you start off with uh, leadership buy-in to the Lean Six Sigma Foundation? Okay, so if you have another two hours, I could answer that one question. So, um, <laughs> you know, because support is kind of a broad category, so I think um, what I'll do is maybe I'll focus on leadership support. And here at TD, I think that they had quite a, an affinity towards wanting to do things better. I, I believe that the executives had done research. They were seeing what, were, what was going on from a process improvement perspective. They had, maybe they hadn't quite done it yet, but they knew that lean uh, was out there um, and was having some great benefits, and they knew they weren't lean. So um, they actually dabbled with, um, you know, process improvement uh, for a few years, I would say, and didn't get a lot of traction. Um, and so they were still, though, quite, uh, quite convinced that it could help them uh, do better than what they were doing today. So. The, um, the president uh, of, of, of the bank, along with one of the executive vice presidents, uh, which were the executive sponsors at the beginning, um, went out and basically said, let's find uh, you know, somebody with some experience in doing this work and see if they can come in and really help us to start solving these problems. And so that's when I joined um, TD, and uh, and then we started very small, to be honest with you, because again, if you go back to one of my earlier slides, we had to set a foundation, and we had to get some proof points. So those were our first steps, and then um, it, this has never been, by the way, really a mandated program. It's been 
you know, uh, here's the problems you guys have to solve for, and then increasingly what a number of the leaders have said is this, this actually is a good way for us to solve those problems um, that the bank uh, lines of business is facing today. From a leadership perspective, though, as we've turned into the end-to-end -end process management, it requires a bit more than it's a nice to do. It, it does actually require a lot more commitment at the very top of the house. And what I would say is uh, where we are in our evolution in that is to really expand the support at the, when I say senior executive, I mean um, the people at the executive level, the president's level, who own big, big segments, because uh, not all of them have been fully engaged in the end-to-end -end process. So we still have some work to do here. But we started with one very influential executive, and uh, he's been a very good sponsor for us. Excellent. So that's starting the foundation. This question says, how do you ensure that improvements are sustained, the ongoing support model for these projects? Um, because you, uh, you have your measurements in place. So you can you can go back and you can you can tell if um, you know, if, if if it's getting better or if it's getting worse. Great. How do you do align black belt process expertise to determine end-to-end -end improvement needs? So again, because we've uh, been doing this for years here at the company, they were already supporting the lines of business, already embedded into the business, and then once the process owners were identified the P&L owners, uh, then what we did is we just shifted the focus uh, of our black belts from doing discrete process improvement to supporting the end-to-end -end as being led by the P&L owners. So it was actually quite easy for us to do that. I don't know if it was easy. I guess I shouldn't say easy. It was, it was quite logical in, in terms of how we did it. <laughs> Great. Well, definitely good results here. So another question. How important is it to you guys to have vendors equally committed to Lean Six Sigma? Great question. Um, I think, again, this is another area of opportunity for us. Um, so if I go back to my old days at uh, Motorola, that was actually how Six Sigma started because um, we recognized very quickly that our internal processes of what we were doing were only as, as uh, defect-free as the incoming part. So uh, we therefore mandated that we had uh, Six Sigma partners, hence um, suppliers. That's really how Six Sigma started really sort of spreading around the world. I do feel um, here that that's a, a, an area for us um, of, of future growth. And, and so I think we still have some work to do. Um, and that probably was going to be in, in maybe one of our next phases. Okay, great. Can you comment on how you handle legal and compliance when it comes to process decisions? I cannot comment on that. Okay. <laughs> yeah, uh, this attendee mentioned that it seems like it can delay process improvement. So that, that may or may not be true for you guys. Uh, we'll go on to the next question. Um, we have a lot of questions about biggest challenges um, what challenges have you guys faced along the way, or what challenges have you had before starting the process effort, which you've touched on a little bit there? Mm -hmm. So I think it's, you know, again, it's just getting um, the buy-in. And I'm sure most of you on the phone, you probably you know, are in the same boat in a sense. I, the biggest challenge is, you know, you're very committed to this methodology. You've seen the results. You know, you're, you're working with businesses who have seen the results. You've got maybe a person in the value chain who's up, you know, upstream who really needs to be doing this work, but they're not doing it. They're not, they're not connecting. They're not doing process improvement. And so it becomes, I think, the biggest challenge when you're doing end-to-end -end, um, value chain management is to get everybody along the value chain to truly understand with one methodology um, how, how we're, we need to work together. Uh, for us, it's taken us six years, and I wouldn't say uh, we're, where we need to be yet. So I'd say for me, I really view that as, as one of the biggest challenges. Right. Well, making great progress. Um, 
this question is about culture changes, and you mentioned uh, you have a change management organization. Can you talk a little bit about how that's structured? Yeah, so again, um, what we do is um, we, we have a change management organization for very large changes that come out of some of the work that we're leading. And so um, they just become part of, of the, um, the process, if you will, uh, for, for the changes that are going to be made. So um, it is something that's <clears throat> been in place for a number of years, so I didn't actually have to go and do anything net new. We just call our change management folks and get them engaged, or they're actually working with the line of business already. And so when it comes to communication and um, all that stuff that goes along with change management, they're, they're embedded into it. The other thing that we do, though, around change management is that as we're going out and doing the training on end-to-end um, -end thinking or um, uh, some of the, the Six Sigma principles or Lean principles later, is that we actually embed change management and thinking about right from the beginning, the most simple change um, that you're going to make in process is a change. And what impact does that have on the employee and on the customer? And so it, it's just sort of embedded into how we teach and talk about what we're doing. Um, for our end-to-end our, our, uh, -end process management um, curriculum that we just came out with, we really, our first two modules on that were all about why do you want to engage in this? you know, what are the changes going to look like? And we did a lot of the focus, not on the technical, what's end-to-end -end and all, you know, how you look at it through the methodology and the playbook, but it was really more about um, the employee and, and it was more about the why, uh, which is a big part of, of uh, the change management aspect. So I think I have time for one more question. Sure. Well, let's finish off with one other question. And just to address a couple of uh, attendees, we will have the recording available within 24 hours. And so for our last question, Leslie, uh, from a benefit tracking perspective, for any given initiative, do you only capture in-year benefits or multiple-year benefits? So again, I'll, I'll, um, I did answer that earlier, but I'll just repeat it again. We actually do it two ways. Um, we we, within year, uh, when the project has completed, we take a 12-month annualized run rate and we book it within that the fiscal year, the year that the project is completed. And then just separately, we're also tracking the uh, accumulated benefits year over year uh, that we are generating through this work as well. Great. Well, Leslie, we all commend you um, for these great results that you've shared with us today. We thank you for your time and effort in putting this uh, presentation together, as well as your team. I've worked with a number of your teammates there who have made this presentation possible. So we, we thank all of you there at TD Bank. We congratulate you for your, uh, your results and, and good standings there. Your president's asking, can you do more? Can you do it faster? <laughs> <laughs> you're you're going to be involved in big investment decisions in the future. Uh -huh. And so we can't wait to hear more from you uh, and appreciate your time today. Any well, last questions? I, I think um, I'd just like to say thank you again for um, having me. Um, for this webinar, uh, and again, um, you know, I, you know, you've been you've been very kind. Uh, we still have a lot of work to do here. Um, you know, we're we're excited about you know where we've gotten on the journey so far, but there's still a lot of a lot of room uh, for us to go to do some of these pretty massive changes, organizational changes that we're trying to do. Um, but we're but we're quite excited, looking forward to the future. And again, I wanted to thank you and and Forrest and the Smarter um, Solutions team as well for all of your support over the last few years. We really do appreciate it. We love working with you guys, Leslie. Thank you so <laughs> much, and thank you, attendees. We will make a recording of this available. Thank you. Bye-bye.